Hi there, and welcome to the tutorial on the RS method of factoring. As you can see, I have a quadratic here of negative 8x squared minus 26x minus 15. Normally, when I, was, when I would view this, I would look for common terms that I could take out of all three terms to make the problem a little more simple, and I would definitely uh, do that as my first step. But in this case, I can't take anything out. So the RS method is great. It always works if uh, a quadratic is factorable even if there's not anything in front of my x squared, even if there's just a coefficient of 1. But it's really useful if there is something in front of my x squared. So the first step of the RS method is we're going to multiply our a value times our c value, which in this specific case, the coefficient of x squared is my a, so there's my negative 8, times my constant term, which is c, which is negative 15, which equals 120. Why we call it the RS method, though, is really step 2 that I need to find R and an S, two values that multiply to that 120. But, at the same time, I have to add to my B term. Okay, my B term in this case is negative 26. Now, if you can't see it right off the bat, you know, I'd try and guess and check some R and S methods, or sorry, R and S factors that multiply to 120 and see if they have a difference of negative 26. But, when you're stuck, list them out. In this case, they're both going to be positive or they're both going to be negative to multiply to a positive 120. So I just start looking at my differences. If I have a 1 and a 120, the difference is 119, 1 and 21, so that's not really going to help me. So I keep going, 2 and 60. Multiply to 120, but the difference is getting a lot closer. That's good. So I keep going, 3 and 40, oh, difference of 37. Keep going, 4 and 30. Now that piques my interest a little bit because... You know, they have a difference of 26, but both would have to be negative, both would be positive. So actually, in this case, that doesn't have a difference of negative 26. So keep going. 5 and 24 would work. No, it doesn't still work. So I'm going to get to 6 and 20. And that really piques my interest because, yeah, if they're both positive, I get a negative 14. But, again, I have that option. If I make one of them negative, I'm going to have to make the other negative to get to a positive 120. So actually, here is my R and my S. That if I take my negative 6 plus my negative 20, that is a difference of negative 26. So that becomes, or those become, my magic R and S values. So my R I'm going to use as negative 6. And my S I'm going to have as negative 20. And it's arbitrary which one you use with R and S. You can flip these. It doesn't really matter. That's going to change what it looks like over here, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this quadratic. I'm going to write it as negative 8x squared. I just write that first term. But what I'm really doing with the RS method is I'm splitting up this B term. From negative 26x, I'm going to make it a negative 6x with my R, and then make it a negative 20x with my S. So I'm splitting up this B value into R and S. And still, it's the same equation when I add this negative 15 at the end here. So I haven't changed any of the values that are going into this function. I'm just changing how it looks. But what I can do then is kind of split it in half here, that I've grouped it into two different, uh, two different pairs here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor each individually, but I'm going to try and find some common occurrences on the left and the right. I'm going to take out as much as I can from the left side, just factor out as much as I can. Looks like I can take out a negative 2x. From there, I just see what's left. Inside, I'd be left with 4x, and then it looks like a positive 3. Now, I'm going to factor the right side, but I'm going to be strategic about it. I want to factor it so I get a 4x plus 3 as a uh, common factor. I want a 4x3 left in the parentheses. So for it to be positive, I definitely want to take a negative, but I want to see what I can take out of a 20 and a 15. It looks like I could take out a 5 for sure. And let's see what I'm left with. I'm left with a 4x to get to the negative 20x. And then look at that. I'm left with a plus 3. So this equation, again, is still the original f of x. It's just that I grouped them. And now I notice they have a common factor. So this is that first term minus the second term. So I can factor out a 4x plus 3. And then what I have is my leftovers. If I actually did uh, factor out a 4x plus 3, I'm left with a negative 2x from here, and then a negative 5 from that second term. 
So the factored form of this quadratic is 4x plus 3 times negative 2x minus 5. And if you need to check, distribute it. We can check it real quick here. Negative 8x squared. I get a negative 20x minus a 6x minus 15. And I feel pretty good about myself. There gets out the negative 26x and then minus 15 on the outside. Now this question can be asked, maybe it's just say factor this. But a lot of times we'll ask her, you know, what are the x-intercepts of this quadratic? I'll put it in factored form to find the zeros of this. Um, and that's where this factor form is really, really useful. That if I set each of these to zero using the zero product property, 4x plus 3 equals zero and negative 2x minus 5 equals zero, it really finds those x-intercepts quickly. So again, the RS method is awesome for factoring. You can use it when there's an A value involved and when there's just a 1 uh, for your A value. Uh, but when there's something in front, guess and check can be a long process. And it takes a little bit of time to find these factors. But with a little bit of practice, again, RS method will always work to factor it. And it does get, uh, does get quite quick once you get good at it. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully we won't have any more factoring problems. Uh, if you need help, definitely come see me, Mr. Prickett.